everyone, it's Kate from The Fold Line. I am back this week with the Sew Down. This is our monthly roundup of stuff that we've read, listened to, watched, heard, in and around the world of sewing that we thought you guys would find interesting. And I've got some really great stuff to share with you this month. <clears throat> so first up, I always share a couple of indie designers that we've got that you may not have heard of or new ones that we've added to the site. And the first designer I'm going to talk to you about is um, Vegeta Hemelson, who has two, four, five indie patterns. Um, her stuff is absolutely beautiful. Her kind of USP in pattern making is that she creates zero waste sewing patterns. So for anyone who's new to this, this is sewing patterns that you basically don't have any leftover fabric with which I love because I don't know about you guys I end up with all these bits and I think oh gosh what should I do with them shall I keep them shall I recycle them um, and yeah so I love the concept that you can use them make them sorry and you don't have anything left over so her patterns are all quite boxy which kind of makes sense um, with the zero waste thing because you're cutting in quite kind of um, straight lines to have less wastage um, the patterns are actually really gorgeous. There are a couple of unisex ones which are really nice, um, nice and boxy. I love her sort of aesthetic. She's based in Sweden, which I think you kind of get a feel for in all the things that she makes. All the samples are made in quite natural fibres. Beautiful stuff. And she's just released actually, I think it was last week, this um, ZW Soft Blouse, which is her latest one, which I'll show you. And um, that's gorgeous if you're looking for something lovely and loose for summer with a big sleeve. So she's definitely worth checking out. <clears throat> the next designer we've got to talk to you about is actually not a new one at all, but we've um, just added them to the site. So pap Paprika Patterns, and these guys, I don't know how long they've been around, really quite from the beginning of the indie kind of sewing pattern market kind of boom. They were definitely one of the first. Um, She's based in France now, I think, and she runs everything from there. So we've got three of their patterns. Um, they're going to be adding more of them. So they definitely will be adding more of them as and when, um, and they're really great. So they're definitely worth going and having a look at. Um, sizing wise as well, they go up from a size six to a 30. So they've got a really great inclusive size range as well. So yes, definitely go and have a look at them. Next up, um, we've got, I've got a few sort of um, exhibitions and interesting things that I thought you guys would like to have kind of read, I guess. Um, so the first up is an article about um, Georgia O'Keeffe, who had, um, there was an exhibition at the Brooklyn Museum about what she wore. And apparently, I didn't know this, that she was like an, a really avid seamstress and made loads of her, most of her clothes and was very, well, I'm sure many of you know her work. It's very organic and quite um, colorful, but actually everything that she wore was really structured or like really kind of, it was all black and white, very um, kind of rigid almost compared to her painting. So it was a really interesting juxtaposition. So there's a fantastic article about um, about the exhibition, which is worth having a read. And then I'll pop a, um, a video, a link to a video, which is also in the kind of blog post. And it shows you some of the stuff that she made um, that was in the exhibition. So I really enjoyed having a read of and look of that. So definitely go and have a have a read and a watch of that. Um, next up, we've got an exhibition. If you're in London. Um, I think this will be a really fantastic exhibition. It's called Designing for Royalty and it's looking at the relationship between a couture designer and a royal client and um, the process behind it and like I'm assuming there'll be lots of twirls and like how they made it. So for us as makers I think this will be really interesting because I'm sure you'll see bits kind of pinned to mannequins and stuff. So that is at, um, at Kensington Palace. Of course, where else would it be? Um, and this starts in, on the 3rd of June, it goes on to the 2nd of January next year, so there's a big chunk of time if you're ever thinking about coming down to London. I thought this would be a really lovely exhibition. Um, so, stuff to watch. I've got three things. First is like a public service announcement. For anyone who hasn't seen 
and I'm, apologies if you're not in the UK, um, the Great British Sewing Bee, um, the BBC have put all the series online, which they have never done before, they've all disappeared. So you can watch the full seven series if you want to, um, and they're just there sitting for you. So I thought if you haven't seen that yet, it might be really nice if you're doing, t you know, to go back, especially the first series, I can barely even remember it. So um, it might be nice to go back and watch that. Definitely worth checking out. The next is a film that I watched that I thought you guys would really like. It's called Always at the Carlisle. Um, it's about a really famous muse uh, museum, hotel in New York that has the most, it's really exclusive, it has really famous people that go and stay there and it's all about, and it's really, it's an iconic hotel and it's about all the people that have got to stay there. They've got really amazing kind of um, talking heads like George Clooney, um, Vera Wang, Wes Anderson, or Naomi Campbell, all talking about their stays there. And it's just really sweet and nice and enjoyable. So if you're looking for something sort of lighthearted to watch, I absolutely loved this. I just really enjoyed it. It's on um, Amazon Prime, so I'll pop a link to it. <clears throat> Next up on the watching, this is also actually on Amazon Prime. I'm sure many of you have got into it, but I and I am as well. The next series of Making the Cut is up on Amazon Prime, which I love. Um, it's very much like Project Runway. Um, so 10 designers, um, all established within their own you know, right, making stuff. It's the same format, but really enjoyable watching, especially if you're sitting down to sew. So I would say go and check that out definitely it's a really that will be kind of really enjoyable for you to watch um next up it's an online event and a book actually i've got so i think if i talk to you about the book then i'll lead on to the event so the book is called shedding the shackle women's empowerment through craft and this book looks i'll just read what she, it's written i haven't read it yet but i just thought it looked really interesting um Offer, offers a fascinating glimpse into women's craft enterprises and the positive impact their individual projects have on providing sustainable lifestyle, um, looking at kind of current craft practices and addresses the issues of female empowerment. I think this will be a really interesting and fantastic book. And if you're looking for something sort of kind of to get stuck into this summer, I think this might be a really nice, actually really nice summer read if you are going away, um, if you're managing to get away on a holiday this year, I think that would be a lovely holiday read. So that's the book. The event is, um, the author is um, doing an event at the Te Fashion and Textile Museum. It's an online event. It's on Thursday the 5th of August. It's five pounds and you can just um, join in. So if you're unsure actually if you want to buy the book or you've got the book already, I thought this would be really nice for you guys to go and join. Um, I really love that they're doing loads, the Fashion and Textile Museum are doing loads of online events at the moment. So um, yeah, and I think it'd be really interesting. So Lynn Stein will be talking, who wrote the book, will be there talking about it. So next up in terms of reading, um, I've got, well, let me get into it. Many of you, I'm sure lots of you are really into gardening. Um, I am obsessed. And um, Romana from The Little Pomegranate shared a while ago this book, which um, she was reading and really loved. And it really kind of captured me and I bought it and I've really enjoyed it. So, um, the book is called Veg in One Bed, How to Grow an Abundance of Food in One Raised Bed Month by Month. So the concept, if anyone who lives, because I live in a city, so I don't have a very big garden, the concept if you don't have very much space, you can still make something, you can still grow loads of stuff. So the idea is that you have this one bed and if you plant it correctly, you can get stuff happening every single month. So she inspired me, but she also has created a hashtag on Instagram called So Veg in One Bed. So if you are interested in getting the book and interested in vegetable growing, there's also a hashtag that you can follow along and lots of sewers have joined it and are sharing things that they are um, growing in their gardens, which I thought was really nice because it's basically sewing, but with a gardening thrown in. So all the keen sewers out there who love gardening, this is, I thought this guys, you'd love this. So 
podcasts. Um, first up, a podcast I've spoken about before, but there's a particular episode that I think you guys would really enjoy. Um, it's Conversations of Inspirations with Holly Tucker, who founded Not On The High Street. She interviews women, well no, sorry, business, indie business owners and talks about their kind of creative journey. Um, this episode is with Lucy Sparrow and I spoke about her before. She was that artist who created all of those um, knitted amazing she she created that um not knitted felted art and she had that drugstore that she created that and everything in it that she'd made i'll pop a picture up so you can see but this podcast episode was really fantastic so definitely worth checking out so next up i've got a really fantastic podcast i'm sure many of you have either seen this or listening to it it's called pieces of britney it's on bbc sounds anyone who is in their mid-30s will you know love britney but loved britney as much as i did you'll really enjoy this it's hosted by pandora sykes who used to um run the high low podcast which i've spoken about many times um it's a really fantastic um look at her life her situation, I'm sure many of you have heard in the news that she's in a legal battle with her father who's got control of all of her finances and everything that she does and how she even, like, how she lives her life day to day. It's really fascinating. It's really well done. And I definitely, if you haven't listened to it yet, go and have a listen because it's fab. Next up, um, this podcast, I've listened to a couple of them and I really enjoyed them and I thought you would too. It's called... Um, the Great Women Artists. So this is, um, it was actually started out as an Instagram account that I used to follow and now it's, they've created a podcast. Um, it's presented by um, Katie Hessel, who is an art historian. And she is interviewing people about their favorite artists. And so the latest one, for example, was Ali Smith talking about Barbara Hepworth. They're really well done, really interesting. I and they're about kind of 50 minutes long, so they're quite a kind of long listen. But if you like the artist and the person interviewing, they're really interesting and um, definitely worth going and having a check out of that one. And last but not least, we've got a little bit of murder because, you know, I can't resist a murder podcast. Um, this one is really fantastic. It's called West Cork. And I did talk about this a really long time ago but it was only available if you had an audible subscription and now it's available on apple podcasts um it's about a murder that happened in 1996 and she it was a was she a tv producer or film producer called sophie toscan and she Tos, oh no, toscan de plantier and she was um killed in a remote village in ireland um it's really fascinating and they never worked out who it was it was, it was badly handled by the police, but they go through it and it's really fantastically produced. So if you like that sort of thing, I'd really highly recommend this. I will also say that Louise told me that there is a documentary on Netflix about it as well. So, I mean, you could do both, but if you don't want to listen to, that, uh, listen to this, there's also a TV documentary on Netflix about it. And she said that was fantastic. So, right. I hope that was helpful and enjoyable and you've, got some good stuff to listen to and kind of read this month and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye!